And good evening. Welcome to New Life Christian Fellowship. It's Bible study time tonight. So we're so glad to have you watching us through the airwaves. We welcome you on Facebook Live. And we just want to let you know that we love you on tonight and that we're so glad that you're here with us. To all of our New Life Christian Fellowship members, know that we love you, but Jesus loves you even the more. So we just want to remind you that today is the last day of September. September is gone, and October will be in just a couple of hours. So what does that mean? That means prayer time. So most of us should have received, all of us should have received, that we're supposed to receive, a text message from 313131, right, Minister Paula? Correct. And all of the instructions that you need to be on the call for prayer in the morning is there. We know that everyone may not be able to attend the call, but we're asking that all that can and has been assigned to, to do so. Amen? We continue to ask for prayer for our country, our nation, our president, this pandemic that we're going through right now, those affected by the pandemic, those who went into the pandemic, those who came out of the pandemic, those who lost loved ones during the pandemic. We're just asking that we just continue to pray because things are not yet where they need to be. Amen? So on tonight, let us go on to the word of God. And we're going to read out of Psalms 34. Just a couple of verses there. Very special psalm. And it reads as follows. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So on tonight, we want each and every one of you to make it your effort to make that special time with God if you haven't already made that time and install and boast on him. Talk to him and tell him, how much you love him and how much you care about him and how thankful you are for all that he has done and for all that he is going to do. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight seeking your holy face, O oh God, saying thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you're going to do in our lives. For this all, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, oh God. We're so grateful and so thankful that we are departing the ninth month of the year and entering into the tenth month of the year, and you have been with us all through it all. So, Father, we just want to say thank you for this day. For this day is a day that once it's gone, we'll never see again, and you will provide us with a new day. You will provide us with a new cheer. You will provide us with a new joy. You will provide us with a level of satisfaction in you that we never had before. And we're so grateful and we're so thankful for all the wonderful and grateful things that you're doing in all of our lives. Father, and tonight, as we go into a time of Bible study, please be with our pastor on tonight. Continue to anoint him. Continue to cover him with the precious blood of Jesus so that he can continue to do the work of the ministry until you say it is done. Because I know that he will never be one of those men of God who would take an early retirement. He will always preach and teach your word until you take him home. So, Father, we're grateful and we're thankful that we have such a man of God as that in this house. And as we enter into a time of praise and worship, be with our minister of music, Lord God. 
touch his vocal cords and his hands. And his accompanist, EJ, Lord God, bless him as well and his family. Bless those who are here tonight with us. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen.
Says we live, we move, and we have our being. He also says that we can do all things through Christ yes, sir. that strengthen in us. Let's do our daily confession. Good to see you and you be seen by people. Amen. Yes. How many of us could be seen by people? Amen. We greet you all this evening in divine love and grace. If you have a Bible, smartphone, whatever you're reading from this evening, someone say, This is the word of God. This is my word from God. Obedience to this word is really the only weapon I have. If I read this word and do exactly as it says, according to the book of Joshua, chapter number one, I shall prosper. I shall prosper in every area of my life. I can be what this word says I can be. You and I can do what this word says we can do. Come on, thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me. Turn to me to the book of James. We're looking at two verses, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. I don't know about you, but this pandemic has been challenging for me. EJ really has been a it's been a real challenge because it, it has affected how I operate, affected what I do on a daily basis. Has it affected most of you all? Has it affected most of you? Let, let me, uh, the path of life is not an easy path to walk. It is filled with all kinds of trials and temptations. Trials such as sicknesses, disease, accidents, disappointments, sorrows, sufferings, and death, and temptation, such as all the seductions to sin and evil. What we need, good God Almighty, how many know we need something? We got all these trials and tests and temptations that come our way. We need some assistance, amen? amen. What we need is a surefire way to conquer all the trials and temptations that we're going to experience because if you live here, you're going to experience tests and trials. But if I had a surefire way of conquering them, I would exercise that gift when the test came. So no matter how severe the trial or temptation, what is the way? It is possessing a spirit of joy. Somebody say joy. 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 And perseverance as we face these trials and temptations. There are three points I want to bring out tonight. Let's read the text first. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Here, here begins the reading of God's word. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. 
knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So for the scripture, give it to me in the Amplified Bible, please. I want you to hear this about tests and about trials. You're going to face them. Look how old you are. Look how light skin, how dark skin, or how good your hair is. I don't care how nice your clothes are. You're going to experience tests, trials, and temptations. You're going to get sick. Now, some people, uh, I've had some friends that ain't never been sick. That's a blessing. But if you're human, you're going to feel some sickness. You're going to uh, get, get some kind of infection. It happens to all of us. Look what James says in the Amplified. Consider it nothing but joy. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, when you fall into various trials. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance. Somebody say endurance. endurance. So the only way I can develop is in endurance is through testing. Can't get away from that. Through experience produce endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. So for the scripture. I don't want to lack anything. Amen. How many want to have everything God's giving them? So the first point, watch this. The first point that I want to bring out to you tonight in respect to this, is that you must understand that you're going to face trials. You hear what I'm saying? We will have many trials. We'll have many temptations. The Greek word for temptation or trial throughout James is a, is a Greek word called perimos. It means to tempt, to try, to test, and to prove. Throughout the Bible, the word perimos and its various forms are used to refer to both the temptation and trials of life. But note, the word means far more than just to be tempted. It means to be tested. You're probably going through some tests right now. You might be going through some relationship tests. Money tests. Amen. So it's more than just temptation. It's to test, it's to try, and ultimately is to prove you. Temptation and trials in life are to prove us and they're beneficial. Are you with me so far? When we conquer, you have to conquer them first. When we conquer temptations, we become much more pure people. We become more holy and more righteous. When we triumphantly go through the trials of life, we become much stronger, more steadfast, and people that persevere. When we stand up against trials and temptations, we become dynamic witnesses to all those who see us. And we demonstrate the living presence and power of Christ in our lives. And he actually lives there. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what you have to understand, the test, the, the trial you're going through, it ain't meant to kill you. That money test, that, that relationship test, and I have them too. I was just sharing with somebody on the way here. I about had enough of some tests, but when I realized, that's why you have to, listen, you're going to have to change the way you see things. Your thinking is going to have to change. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, are you listening to me out there on Facebook? It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed when you're going through difficulties. Because when we're going through difficulties, nobody can say this feels good when it feels painful. But you've got to be able to tell yourself, even though it feels painful, when I get to the end of this pain, it's going to be a benefit for me. Do I get it? Do, am I getting somebody in understand what I'm Because most of us, we go through. We don't like to go through. But you would like to go through if you knew going through would benefit you. Amen. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. It becomes 
a benefit. James says that we'll fall into all kinds of temptations and trials. And the idea that many trials and temptations of all sorts, of all kinds of temptations are But we must always remember, no matter what the trial or temptation, it is good for us. Every test, every trial I've had in ministry, it really has been good for me. I'm going through some tests right now, and they have been good for me. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And this is, listen, this is all about growing up. Brother Leonard, some Christians don't want to grow up. They go through stuff, they complain, they murmur, they cackle, they holler, and they don't mature. The purpose of you being tested and being tried is so you can grow up. For our light affliction, somebody say light affliction. Light affliction. Our light affliction is but for a moment, amen. You know, I said, uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mother was the, the, the breadwinner in the house. She was also the disciplinary. And she said, look, I'm going to either punish you or give you a whooping. You choose your poison. I would always take the whooping. Why? Because it ain't lasting that long. You get punished, you punish for hours. Walk with me, somebody. If you get punished, you might be punished for a whole week. And guess what? I don't want to experience anything like jail. If I'm going to experience jail, I want to be in jail where I get out right away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And listen, if I can tell on myself, I have been inside. And there's a difference when you know you're inside and you're getting out because you got a lawyer. And you know you're inside and you ain't got no representation. For our light affliction, what you're going through right now, I'm not going to try to trivialize or minimize it. If you get your right attitude, because what, I, what am I saying? I'm saying this. Listen to me. It is essentially important. You have to have the right attitude when you're going through trials and tests. You must develop a spirit of joy. Somebody shout joy. joy. Mm -hmm. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Now, it's hard to say that if you don't believe it to be true. You got to believe God's word. You got to believe that whatever you're going through is temporal and it's not meant to kill you. It's meant to make you better. Anybody here have gone through any tests, any trials that have actually made you a better person? But when you were going through it, you couldn't, you couldn't, you don't know how you, how you stood the pressure. But when you came out, you realized that God has made you better. Amen. Amen. Look at James chapter 5, verse 11. I like this scripture. Because we know people are going through. It says, behold, we count them. We count you happy who endure. You've heard of the patience of Job. You've seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy. So while we're going through... God has a rescue plan with our name on it. Amen. When I get in trouble, guess what? He ain't going to never let me go down. Yea, do I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. David said, I fear no evil. Why? Because of who's with me. His rod and his staff, they do what? They comfort me. He even prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. My head he anoints with all. I like this one, Leonard. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the day. Do I have anybody believe that to be their, their testimony? He said, we have heard of the patience of Job and seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy. Look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. So we have to all take into consideration we're going to have trials. We're going to have tests. Don't think they'll be strange. The Bible said don't, don't think they'll be strange when you're going through various fiery tests. It ain't nothing strange about it. And I said to him, sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation 
and had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Point number two. Point number two. You need an attitude of joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Watch it. And listen, sometimes you're going to have to manufacture joy on the basis of on the basis that you know that whatever you're going through, it has a shelf life. That whatever you're going through, God ain't going to leave you there. He's going to bring you out. If he brought you in, he's going to bring you out. Amen. Amen. So nothing that we're going through, even in fact, you could be on this planet. It's only for a short time. That's why he says, oh, death, where is thy sting? Number one is, is the fact that we will have many trials. And temptations. The path of life is not easy. It's a path that we walk. And it's filled with all kind of trials. And all kind of tests. That's number one. Number two. We have to develop an attitude of joy. When we face these trials. It is joy. We are to face trials and temptation. With a spirit of joy. How is this possible? How can a believer be joyful. When he's facing sickness and disease. How can a believer be, 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 be joyful when he's disappointed, when death comes? Joy is unusual, not, is, is usually not what fills our heart when we face these things. When severe trials come our way, we too often we despair and we become discouraged and defeated. Most of us certainly do not have joy. So there's only one way to face trials and temptations with the spirit of joy. We have to switch our thinking. Somebody say, I have to switch. Uh -huh. You know how you switch up on people. Don't tell me you can't do it. I got a whole lot of family members. They'll switch up and switch out on you. Which means, guess what? If you practice it, you can put it into your life. You got to be able to turn the switch off of your challenges or your suffering and turn the joy switch on. What are you saying? The reason why I turn the joy switch on is because the suffering that I'm going through is only temporary. It's going to make me better. And isn't, isn't it what I want? I want to get better. Don't we all want to get better? Amen. I've, I've seen people buy exercise, exercise equipment. If you want to get better, you're not going to get better just looking at it. You're going to have to exercise. you got to use that stuff. Amen. I have to develop a spirit of joy. i got to turn on my attitude about trials and temptations completely around. We have, to, we have to quit thinking negatively and start thinking positively. In the words of Scripture, we must know something and then we must do something. Somebody say, I must know something. And then I must do something. We must know something. Know that the trials and the temptations that we're going through is going to work patience in our lives. How many times you've been impatient, made decisions because of you lack patience and you wind up getting in trouble. You wind up investing in something that you shouldn't have invested in because you were impatient. So the tests and the trials that we go through or to give us patience. So, so we've got to learn how to switch, turn the switch off when the stress comes, when the pressure comes, and turn the switch on that says, guess what? This pressure, this stress is going to make me better. It might even make me rich. I might get a new husband out of this. I might get a new one. I might get a new job. It, listen, I can't wait until I go back into some kind of so that's why the Bible said, count it all joy. How can you count pain joy if you know what's on the other side of pain? Yeah, yeah. The Israelites, the Pharaoh was chasing them. And they found themselves in a quagmire. Pharaoh was to their rear and the Red Sea was to their front. They didn't know what they were going to do. They had no idea. But God knew in advance and it wasn't until they were able to cross over to the other side that they started singing. You got to have the attitude that you're already on the other side while you still have to navigate the Red Sea. Yes. Oh, you didn't catch that. Yes. Yes. 
you got to believe that you've already crossed the Red Sea, even though the water is still there. You got to have a mindset that switches up. Yeah, there's an obstacle here, but the obstacle is not meant to kill me. It is meant to show the grace that's in my life because God will never leave me or forsake me. Any test, any trial I'm going through, it ain't meant to kill me. It's meant to make me better. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There had no temptation. Watch this. No test. No pressure. Nothing I've been tried with that is that, that is not common to man. You know, you hear people, man, I'm going through. Oh, man, my wife. Oh, man, my kids. Oh, man, my job. And you, they sound as if what they're going through is unusual. They sound as if they're, they're the only ones that ever went through anything. You ever talk to anybody like that? And what they're saying is that they lack the ability to endure. Oftentimes, they lack maturity. Maturity should come with age, but there are a lot of old, immature people. I'm going to say that again. Maturity should come with age, but unfortunately, age don't always mature people. Anybody hear what I'm saying? But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tried, to be tempted above that which you are able. That's important to know. There's some Christians tonight might feel like pulling their hair out of their head because they don't know how ends, and they don't know how they're gonna make ends meet. Remember, over 30 million jobs were lost. The country's only, only recovered about 10 million jobs. There's another 20 or, or maybe 30 million people out there not working, and we don't really know what they're going through. I got good news for you. There's no temptation. There's no test. There's no trial. There's nothing that you're going through that's not uncomfortable. There's other people that had the same kind of test. But watch this. God was faithful. What do you mean? He did not suffer them, and he ain't going to suffer you. You to be tempted above that which you but will make with the temptation, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You understand that? So with the test, with the pressure, comes a way out. And the way out is not so that I can run from the test. The way out is just in case the test is overwhelming. Isn't that important that God ain't going to let you die in the test that you're going through? So we must know something. What I must know. Verse 3 tells me what I must know. Knowing that the, that, that, that the trying of my faith. What I got to know. That my faith is being tried. You know. I got to know that, 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 that it's going to work patience. Amen. We must know what point one stress that trials and temptation are not to defeat or discourage us, but to prove us, to make us much stronger and more righteous. The word patience means to be steadfast, to persevere, to endure. The believer should know that the trial or temptation of life will make him more steadfast, more persevering and more enduring. They will make him or her more stronger, not weaker. They will make him or her strong, just like Jesus. When the believer keeps this fact in his mind, he or she can face all the trials and temptations much more positively. He or she can then begin to move towards the spirit of living joyfully in the face of your trials and temptation. You must do something. You must know something. You must do something. You must let patience work within us as stated above. You must persevere. And you must keep on persevering and never give up. Amen. To take the initiative and to exert the energy and effort to conquer and to gain victory over whatever the enemy has brought your way that God has allowed to come at your doorstep, you are to keep fighting until you overcome that test. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Note, how can we have joy 
when a trial or temptation confronts us by knowing that it's going to make me stronger. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's going to make me stronger. And then by persevering against it and conquering it by knowing that it's an opportunity to make us stronger and more like Jesus. When we look at trials and temptations as opportunities, then we begin to face them with joy. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. Anybody get anything tonight? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, watch this, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Give it to me the NLT, son. This is a powerful scripture right here. Since he himself has gone through the suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Hallelujah. I said tonight, Lord, help me. Yes. I got some tests in the morning at 7 o'clock. I said, Lord, help me. Give me the strength that I need to do my job this evening. Lord, help me. And guess what? He's done just that. Somebody say amen. amen. I got to do something. I got to know something, and I got to do something. James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is working patience. Here you go, man. Man, you tried my last nerve. Thank God that ain't your faith. Look at 2 Timothy, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. There's some things you've got to know, huh? When you're going through. There's some things you've got to know. And there's some things you've got to do. Peter tells us what we got to know. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. He knows. Yes, yes. So while I'm going through, guess who knows? He does. And guess what? No matter how, how tied up I am, I've been hog tied. I ain't going to tell you when. That means my feet was handcuffed to my wrist. But guess what? I got untied. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. That's why you ain't got to want to get back at anybody. Just pray that they live. Amen. Come on, say that with me. Say, I don't have to seek any revenge against anybody. Any right? Against All you got to do is pray that they live. Why? Because life gets everybody. Everybody. Nobody can escape life. The only way off this planet is death. You can't get off it unless you die. I wish I had a witness here. And the third thing, third point I want to bring out as we get very close, that there is the result of the test is going to perfect you totally. God wants to perfect us. Look at chapter, James chapter 1, verse 4. The results of facing trials and temptation can be wonderful. What do you mean? Most wonderful things happen when a person perseveres and conquers. Number three is the results. When, 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 I, when I change my attitude about trials and temptations to joy, the results are that they make me perfect or they mature me. You get that? The person becomes perfect, not perfect in the sense that there's nothing wrong with him. The word does not mean perfect in the sense of becoming a perfect person. It means perfection of purpose. 
That means that when I'm going through these tests and these trials, they're perfecting me as it relates to what God has purposed me to do. It has to do with the end game, the aim, the goal, the purpose. It means fit, mature, fully grown up. When I go through these tests, the end result is that I'm a bad man. I'm mature. I'm grown up. I'm not an infant anymore. I'm, like my, I'm not like Paul said in the book of Ephesians. You can't toss me to and fro. I don't need milk anymore. I eat strong meat. When you mature, and beloved, you got mature. Listen, in this time of pandemic, this is the time that you need to be developing strength so that you can mature. We need mature people in church. God has a twofold purpose for every believer to come more and more like Jesus. That's the purpose of those tests day by day, trial by trial, temptation by temptation. When a person perseveres and conquers, he becomes more and more complete. He becomes stronger, more pure, more righteous. He or she becomes more and more perfected, fulfilling the task and purpose that God has for your life. That's the results of going through tests. That's the results of going through trials. You are being shaped, changed into the image of God. So don't run from them. Run to them. Don't cry. Don't murmur and complain. Ask God for the grace to turn your pain into joy. Yes. To turn your sorrow into something uplifting. To give you the spirit of praise yes. Yes. when you have the God when you have the garment of heaviness on your morning, <laughs> giving, giving someone the spirit of praise when, they, when they're dealing with the, with, the, with the heaviness of mourning. God wants to perfect us. Any questions tonight? Amen. We're going to take up an offering. I don't know about you, but I want me some money to church tonight. It's the end of the month, which means the eagle is either in the air and he's landing either tonight or somewhere after midnight. And so since I know the eagle going to land, I might as well go ahead and get my money tonight. I want to encourage you out there, those that you have been giving faithfully, keep on giving. We don't really know when we're going to be back in maximum participation, but guess what? It ain't nothing but a test. The purpose of this test is to make us more like Jesus. It ain't, it's not to kill this church. It's to make us more stronger, more holy, more righteous. So we have an offering. Hold it in the air right now. And let's pray. Father, we give you thanks. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for giving us seed to the sow and bread to the eater. We now give back what you've given us. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' marvelous name, somebody say amen. I'm not out of word. I'm just out of time. I hope you got something tonight. Don't just be home complaining about what your husband ain't doing. Maybe he ain't doing it because God is using him to get you over that last hump to perfect you, to mature you. It's interesting. We don't get to choose the test. We get to take it though. I prophesied in Jesus' name that God will grace you tonight with all that you need to pass the tests, the trials, the sufferings that you're going through. I release an anointing from this building and from my life to wherever you are that will undergird you in this difficult time that you're dealing with. And may the Spirit of the Lord God may come upon you May he anoint you afresh and redirect your thinking when you're going through tests. I pray that God gives you an imaginary button that when the pain comes, you can turn on joy. It be unspeakable and full of glory. We give you thanks. We give you praise in the wonderful master's name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's stand for the benediction. Come on, come on.
right. Stand for the benediction. Father, we give you thanks. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you and I that the season of tests and trials that you're going through right now, they're not meant to kill you. They're meant to perfect you. They're meant to give you the kind of results that give God glory. We love you. God bless you. Stay safe. Continue to follow the COVID-19 protocols. And we look to see you on Sunday. God bless you. Take us on, show. Thank you.